Ionic got acquired by OutSystems, or in business words, Ionic is joining OutSystems. You've probably seen the news and you're asking yourself, is this good or bad for me? And what does it mean to the future of Ionic? Can I still use it for free? And is actually like Ionic something you can purchase? So let me give you some more hints, some story and some ideas around what is going on in the Ionic world. First of all, uh, here's the announcement on Twitter. Today we're incredibly excited to announce that Ionic is joining OutSystems uh, to fix enterprise software development once and for all. Here from CIO, uh, CEO Max Lynch what this means. There's a nice article, there are a lot of congratulations going on below this tweet. But first of all, if you don't actually know what this means, it's hard to describe and I had a video a few months ago explaining what Ionic actually is because it's confusing. We have the Ionic UI, we have Ionic packages in our application and then there's the Ionic company which is actually they are two very different things. So OutSystem um, or Ionic is joining OutSystem. This means the whole Ionic company including all of their solutions and everything they have developed is joining OutSystems. And the Ionic UI that most of you refer to as Ionic is pretty much just one very small component, an open source package of the Ionic component, just like another package, Capacitor or Stencil. So we have to distinguish between these things. There's the Ionic company, which is doing business. They have, for example, here, um, they have as platforms uh, AppFlow, of course. They have packages for mobile security, uh, biometric storage. Um, but AppFlow is really the most, uh, the, the, I think their cash co or their enterprise support, I don't know exactly. And they also uh, work on portals and other cool new things. And Ionic SDK is just one part of the Ionic company. So if you fear that Ionic SDK will be suddenly paid or anything bad happening to Ionic SDK, that's not gonna happen. I'm I'm like 99.9% .9 that this is not gonna happen. So if you don't watch the video to the end, just don't fear about that. However, what does this mean to Ionic? This post is actually pretty good and Max Lynch is describing a lot what's going on behind the scenes. The short version, Ionic will remain independent and you can expect a significant investment in our open source and research and development. And this line is only good for us as developer because it means they're gonna put in money of course into different parts of their business but on top of that they're gonna invest in open source which means ionic ui capacitor stencil and all the cool things that we are used to since i think i think 10 years is it ionic 10 years i think i found it like yeah, in 20, yeah, it is 10 years already. Wow, so great. Um, with AngularJS back then, that was so interesting time. So it's an interesting time. Um, some comments around this from Max Lynch. Um, our goal has always been to make software development easier and more accessible. I think all Ionic uh, developers can agree. And while we focus on improving lower level code authoring process, OutSystem focused on powerful visual UI logic and DevOps tooling. Now, I actually didn't know about OutSystems before. Apparently they do some really cool low code stuff. And if you've been around Ionic, you probably already get an idea where this is going, but I will come back to this in a second. So Max uh, is then also uh, continuing uh, they've been talking about partnering earlier this year already and they noticed that there are a lot of synergies between them. So uh, main concern is what this means for the community and customers like us, the developers. But as far as I've understood and as far as I know, Max Lynch, so I, I, I've talked to Max a lot about the, uh, during the last years, um, like not every week, but on and off again. And I think Max has been pretty clear about his intentions. So he always wanted to bring the web forward. He wanted to, together with Ben, build something for web developers to easily build mobile applications. And he has been very intentional about not doing the Silicon Valley stuff, raising tons of money, losing money all the time and just 
are building this massive company. No, he's been very intentional about building Ionic in a sustainable way. And whenever I talked to Max, he said, yes, we're doing great. Business is going great. We got tons of enterprise customers. AppFlow is doing great. And yes, we still and always will support the open source Ionic framework and capacitor. So with all of this in mind, I am very, very sure that this is not an acquisition because Max just want to make a few millions. I have no idea about the amount of money <laughs> that went uh, into this deal, but I'm very sure. And he also said that he is not going away. As for me, I'm not going anywhere. Ionic is staying independent and my role continues to be representing Ionic to the world and working closely with the leadership team here. I don't think Max just says, okay, give me, I don't know, 10, 20 million and I'm out here and just do whatever you want. No, he has always been a massive supporter of web and mobile development. So um, this is why I think we're gonna see some really cool things out of this deal. Questions, of course, incredible. What does this mean for Capacitor? Capacitor's core infrastructure for combined Ionic and OutSystems platform long-term, so expected to get a lot of love moving forward. Now, Capacitor always got a lot of love, but I knew or know that the Ionic company during the last year was kind of understuffed in some areas. They shifted focus to Capacitor, I think a year or two ago, because they saw that Capacitor was really like the, the, the winning horse here. Um, so this is gonna be interesting. Mike as well, jumping onto this, this means more investment into Capacitor as well. Uh, that is definitely gonna be interesting. Some like uh, other opinion, uh, withholding judgment, but I'm cautiously optimistic by Keith Costello. Um, it's true that always like, frankly, that we share a common vision rationally is a disingenuous cliche in so many merchant acquisitions. And I agree, like who would say, no, we don't have anything in common. Uh, we're rivals and uh, yeah, we don't work that this will be terminated uh, next month. Like nobody would say this, but I honestly do think this combination of OutSystems and Ionic could bring out something pretty cool. The Reddit community is also kind of happy. <laughs> Of course, we, uh, we always need that one comment. Like, I'm not against Flutter anymore, but Flutter is not better than anything, uh, not better than all. <laughs> anyway, so which brings me back to the future. What can we expect in the future? So OutSystems, low code, high performance, let's go. They have apparently this cool tool. Low code means you can have like a drag and drop stuff where you can build stuff, uh, things. It is different to no code. So you probably know the no code um, area. We just need to tingle together a few pieces and everything just works. With low code, you're getting closer to actually implementing some real functionality. And this is interesting if you now think about what Ionic did years ago with Ionic Creator. And I am very, I, I, can't, like, I, I can't predict anything. But I feel like in the next two years, we're gonna see a new Ionic Creator supported by OutSystems because this Ionic Creator thing has always been great. It's not working anymore. I tried to replicate something like that with Kickoff Ionic. Um, so in my limited ways, I was able to, to do this kind of uh, app navigation and authentication, adding pages and uh, generating uh, from all of this some uh, code that you could export and then run, but it was never close to anything of Ionic Creator. So now without systems on their side, I'm pretty sure we're gonna see something like Ionic Creator in the future. Ionic Creator was a great idea back then. They just didn't have enough resources, I think, just like they, well, Ionic Studio wasn't that great of an idea, but <laughs> um, for Creator, I'm pretty sure we're gonna see it again. On top of that, we have heard that uh, investment into open source, which means Ionic UI will grow, Capacitor will grow, Stencil will grow, everything will stay free and will be uh, supported. And probably there's also uh, a bigger uh, budget for the community, maybe. Are we gonna see like an, an even bigger Ionic conference next year or the year after? I don't know, but it could mean something like that. On top of that, of course, Ionic has their existing uh, Offers, AppFlow will certainly be available. I'm curious to see what happens to portals because it was such an interesting concept. Um, and I really do hope that OutSystem is supporting this and even growing portals in the future as I definitely want to use it even more. 
Um, so that's going to be interesting. I don't know exactly how they're going to treat this area with authentication, biometrics and storage like the enterprise packages. But since they're supporting a lot of enterprise customies, I don't think they're going to cut this out at any time soon. Um, maybe in like five years or slowly like fading this out in favor of other tools. I'm still awaiting the end-to-end -end testing solution that was promised like last year, but hopefully the investment from OutSystem also flows into that part. So there you got it. Uh, that's the acquisition from Ionic explained. I hope this clarified a few things, especially what Ionic is and what this means to you. I think uh, the only thing you really need to take away right now is this acquisition is nothing you need to fear or worry about. Um, so far, everything that I've read, everything that I know about the parties means that we're going to have an even better Ionic framework in the future. And that's what we all care about, that you came for. So make sure you stay subscribed because there will be more Ionic content in the future. And I will catch you in the next video. Of course, until then, as always, happy coding, Simon.